Listen up, ladies and gents. The massive scale I build on in survival mode is glorious in presentation, but there's a lot of resource grinding that takes place behind the scenes, and since I'm going to be blasting through resources like never before in this episode, I decided to show you a bit of the tedium I go through to make this world happen. Anyway, hey there, how's it going? My name is Antlerboy, and welcome to my Minecraft 116 survival world, where I do things that other game modes were introduced to make easier in this game. The reason I'm gathering tons of dark oak is because it's the wood type I use most often, and you know what they say, once you go dark, there's no other kind of bark. So far, I've placed down over 80,000 stone blocks in this world, and we're going to add a substantial amount to that number in this episode. The grinding you see on screen at the moment got me about three shulker boxes worth of stone, which sounds like a lot, but it's only about 5,000 blocks, which I fear won't be enough for what I have in store for today. If you're excited for all the progress that's going to be made in this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It's one of the best ways to support my small channel. But for now, let's get going and hop into first person over to me in the studio. Thank you ever so much, me, for that grinding forecast. Here we are in first person, and I have my three boxes of stone which will go very well with this other box of stone I have. So in total, we've got four shulker boxes we can be working with. As you can see, my netherite pickaxe isn't doing too well, and I had to break into a diamond pickaxe while I was doing the grinding. So let's get this guy healed up. And while we do that, let's take care of another thing I'd like to do. So in here, I have a whole ton of stuff that I've raided from end cities, and I'd like to put together some nether gear from this stuff. All we need to do is craft a couple pairs of diamond boots, and we should be good to go to head to my end farm. A few of the enchantments I'm going to need for this gear can be supplied to me by my villager trading hall here, and so I got some mending books and unbreaking, so let's get going over to my end farm and get some stuff enchanted. Now, I don't think I've ever shown the nether in my world. I haven't really built anything exciting in there, but there is a tunnel that leads all the way to the end, and that is obviously where we need to go. As we get through the nether, it's actually just right here, and it's a straight shot over to the end. Gotta be really careful so you don't hit the sides here, though, and these magma cubes are really a pain. They hit hard in this update. But as we enter the end, the farm is actually right here, so all we gotta do is fly into this water and get some enchanting done. So I already have this box right here of books that I've already enchanted, and maybe I can find some that'll be useful to us. Okay, feather falling, obviously going to be necessary. Respiration, aqua affinity. The rest, I think we're just going to have to enchant our way to. Prepare your ears, ladies and gentlemen, because this is not a pretty sound. So right now, I just have to keep doing this until my pickaxe is repaired. It's pretty quick, as you can see. And then I have to go enchant some fire protection gear. Just slurping on some XP, don't mind me. So what I'll be going for here is anytime it says fire protection four, and that's a three. That's not going to do. Protection three won't cut it, and fire protection three won't cut it either. So what I'll do in that case is just take a level one enchant, remove it from that piece of gear, and start over and see what we can get. And look at this. We got fire protection four, so if we're lucky, we get unbreaking three as well. So that's pretty much our pants done. We just need to put mending on them. The helmet and boots actually have way more enchantments you need to get to have maxed out enchants. So let's try to get those. Since we already got the pants, I'm going to take this blast protection four just so that we can make some, some, some creeper resist pants in the future. And there we go. Depth strider three. That's pretty good. That's one of the ones we need. And I'll take it even if it's just that. Okay, finally, after a lot of painful enchanting, we've got our fire gear. So... I need to get ready to get into the nether. Now, I didn't make this gear for no reason at all. I actually need to do some more grinding because blackstone and basalt and other stuff you need to collect in the nether is stuff that I'm in great need of. So I'm going to go get some of that and I will see you back in the overworld. One very successful nether trip later, here we are back in the overworld and let me show you what I got. I got almost an entire box of bone blocks a full box of both blackstone and one of nether bricks and some extra stuff I found in bastions right here. But let me show you guys how good fire protection actually is. And let's get away from this portal a little bit because it's loud. I feel like fire protection and pretty much anything that isn't protection gets a really bad rap. And listen, I know you're going to think this is a really bad idea, but I have a fire resistance potion if we need it. But listen, chilling in lava is pretty cool. Like, I, I understand I'm going to lose a little bit of health, but it's going to take a really long time. So if I fall into lava in the nether, I'm going to have time to hop out and chug a fire resistance potion if I need it. 
But look at this mess right here. We can't have this. This is unacceptable. We have to build some more mountains because in the last episode, I left it up to a vote what we were going to do in this one. The winner with a grand total of a whopping three votes was continuing with the mountains project, which I think is a great idea. Obviously, this is going to be a huge project that'll take many episodes to complete. So I might hop and do some other things in a few episodes here and there. But let's get started. With a huge project like this, I lay out my mountain scaffolding as I call it, so you're gonna see me start to sketch lines of what I want the terrain to look like. There's sort of a system to the madness. I usually start off with where I want the walkable pathways to go. For this first section, I wanted to have a hiking trail that goes around this peak and a way to get up on top of it. So my big idea for this trail is to have it be looking out over some of the best scenic views in my worlds, some of which exist already like the castle and some that are coming up later in the series. The peaks and trails aren't the only planning that goes into it though. I usually have at least a rough idea of a few structures and landmarks I want to go on the mountain that help me decide where to make the flatter sections. Take the castle for instance. The whole purpose of that mountain is to have the castle on top and I knew I really wanted a bridge in between those two peaks. It's these types of ideas that makes it all come together in the end. To be fair though, there's a lot of time where I'm just winging it and trying things out. I mean... I always have a perfect plan. For, forget I said that. You never heard anything, okay? Getting to the enormous section I managed to lay out in this time lapse, I applied the same principles as that previous part, and I just had a lot of fun messing with exactly how tall I wanted the mountains to be. I did a lot of flying around and decided to make the apex of this mountain just slightly shorter than the opposing side. It's keeping these larger scale things in mind that really sets apart good terrain composition that's pleasing to the eye from just randomly placed blocks. While I have the chance, I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part in what's become a small community at this point. That includes everyone who's subscribed, likes the videos, takes part on the Discord server, and everyone who just watches my videos. I really appreciate all the feedback so far, and I'd love to know how you guys feel about an episode like this where I mostly focus on getting a ton of terraforming progress done. Let me know with a comment below. I read all of them and try to answer as many as possible, so make your voice heard so I know what you guys enjoy. And if you'd like to join the Discord, there's a link in my About tab on my channel. I try to chat to people as often as I can, and the people there are really great, so check it out if you want to talk to me and other builders. As the largest peak of this mountain gets built, I'm going to leave you with the uplifting music and hop into first person to tell you guys about my plans for this area. So I will see you on the other side. All right, so while we're up high here by the castle, I'd like to show you guys what my plans are for this mountain. So what I want to do, I've already talked about my plans to put a church right here. And the reason I built this little area to get up here was actually because I want to build this little platform of land right there to have a cemetery. And the reason for that is the village right here is so close to the ocean. And I feel like the ocean would be very important to the people of this kingdom. So having this little raised up area where the cemetery is to let their loved ones look out over the ocean once they're past. I just feel like that's a, a nice little bit of lore and a nice thing for them to do. So coming over here, this path was the first thing I built in the time lapse. So the point of this trail is to make it a bit of a scenic trail for whenever I release the world download. And coming up here, I think I'm going to have this drop off as a cliff into this area we're going to be building down here. So you can look out over all the things I have planned for spawn and this section over here. And then you can come up over this way and take a look at the world so far. And obviously it gives a very, very nice view of the castle and the vineyard and just the whole mountain on the other side. So after you come down this direction, I want this trail to continue and somehow connect up to this mountain over here and make it so that you can scale it all the way to the top. One thing that I'd really like to finish in this episode is connecting these two sides up that we've built. But before we do that, I've actually done something to take a little bit of a break that I'd like to show you guys. And so coming this direction, approaching the lighthouse that I built just a few episodes ago, I actually decided to interior decorate it because... I needed a quick creative break from building those mountains, so I decided to come in here and decorate. And so for this bottom floor, since it has the stone brick walls and not a single window, I decided to fill the walls up with a bunch of plants and bookshelves and 
put a little kitchen in here, make it nice and cozy. Coming upstairs, this is where the lighthouse keeper would have his bedroom, so I made it a lot brighter. One thing I haven't mentioned in my other interior showcases is that I often go for a theme. Basically just matching colors, going with color schemes you've already been using, and I think this fits in great. It matches with the sea pickles and all the plants. Another quick example of this is when I use the cyan carpet inside the vineyard and match the beds with the same color. It's a really simple tip and pretty obvious, but it does help when you're decorating interiors, so keep that in mind. Since staircases take up so much space, I decided to go with a ladder, and my favorite ladder design is just going with an upside down spruce stair and having spruce trap doors to put the ladder on. It just makes it seem a little bit thinner than if it's on full blocks. And up here, I just made a little bit of an attic or a storage room for this in-between area. And for this part up here, I actually don't have enough space to make it so that you can get up on top. So I wanted a way for the lighthouse keeper to actually light the fire up there. And since I'm using soul fire, I decided to have this soul campfire. And I guess my idea with it is that it would heat up the, the soul sand or soul soil that I have up there and light it up. And like a lot of things, that doesn't really make any sense, but it's Minecraft, so we do the best with what we got. I feel like it was a pretty creative solution, but let me know what you guys think. I really hope you enjoyed that little tour of the lighthouse, but let's get going with connecting these two mountains. I am excited to do it, so let's hit that time lapse once again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what an awesome epic time lapse and how long it was. See, here's what's happened. I actually ran out of resources. All that stuff I collected in the beginning, all the dirt and all the stone, I don't have anymore. So that's actually going to have to do it for the amount of work I can do this episode. But I think we did pretty well. I mean, this gives a good idea of what we want. I'm going to have another big peak coming up behind there, probably behind these. And at least we managed to get a good start on what we want to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm running out of time for this episode. Literally, I got to get this up and I need to do other things. So if you made it all the way to the end, then you're the champ. And I appreciate your existence. And until we see each other next time, have a good one.